So it's time to put all the pieces together and edit our landscape images in Photoshop. Now, if you're just joining me for this one video, welcome. If you've been watching my whole course, then welcome back. This is the very last video on my Photoshop for Landscape Photographers course. We're gonna put together all of the topics that we've learned throughout this course and put all the pieces together to make it happen on one photo. Now, if you haven't seen the videos earlier in the course and you don't still fully understand Photoshop, make sure you go back and check out those videos. This whole course is in a playlist. And if you are following week by week, I also added two older videos that I created a while ago covering um, a couple different effects that you can apply in Photoshop. I added those to the course as well. So make sure to check those out before you watch this one if you haven't already. Now in this video, I'm gonna show you how we're gonna take this raw image here and we're going to make it look like this. Um, we've got a lot of work to do. Let's jump right in there. And I'm starting in Lightroom like a lot of you guys probably will be. This is the raw file here. I've st stacked this um, in Helicon Focus is why it's got a weird file name, but it is basically the raw file here. I've just done a focus stack already in Helicon Focus. Um, so we're starting with a raw image here. A lot of times I'll go through and adjust some basic sliders in Lightroom, but I'm gonna show you how to do it all in Photoshop because this is a Photoshop course, not Lightroom. But if you are using uh, Lightroom for organization, you can find your photo in the uh, grid view here and you can right click or control click if you don't have a mouse. Oops, and hold right click and go to edit in and you're going to go down to open a smart object in Photoshop. That is going to load out. Now I know we haven't talked a lot about smart objects. Essentially what it does is it allows you to apply adjustments to a photo layer that you can go back in later and make adjustments to. So I'm gonna do a camera raw adjustment, which you guys probably already know about. If I do it on a smart object, I'm able to go back in and adjust that um, and later, whereas if I don't do it as a smart object, I just do it as a regular layer. Once you make the adjustments on camera raw and hit okay, they're baked in. You have to just delete and restart um, on that one layer if you wanna adjust it. So we're using the smart object indicated by this little icon down here on the layer. Let's go to filter and let's go to camera raw. Now here in camera raw, we're just gonna do our basic adjustments. You know, we're gonna drop the highlights a little bit. Maybe we'll raise the shadows, bring up the whites, increase the blacks, maybe increase the exposure while we drop the highlights. We don't wanna go so far that we start to get this muddy washed out color here. So we wanna stay right about right there. I'm okay if this little spot is blown out. Um, we'll go into the curve. We'll just add a touch of contrast here, just like that. I'm gonna bring that blacks point up just a little bit so we don't crush those blacks details. I know there's a person in my photo. I'm gonna edit that out at the end, so don't worry about that. Um, I took this on a workshop and I honestly just had a couple seconds to grab the photo. This was one of my clients, I was helping him out. Um, so I didn't have a lot of time to nail my shot. So this is what I got, um, but it'll make a great example. So again, we just adjust these sliders. Um, you can go in and do some color adjustments here if you want. Um, I personally don't do a lot in the color mixer here because I like to use some of Photoshop's tools, but I will go in to uh, what color is what I'm looking for. I can't even find it. Um, because I'm noticing I want to adjust the white balance here. First of all, it is way too magenta toned. You can tell because the rocks are almost like this pinkish tone, this pinkish like tint. So I just want to bring that back a little more honest. And then I think the image is too warm. You'll notice the color of the sky. It feels like maybe it's a little bit too warm. It should be maybe a little cooler just to make that more of a true blue. About in there, you can toggle the eyeball. That looks much better, much more honest to me. I'm looking for just something that looks realistic um, to start with here. Now I can hit okay. Now I'll show you the benefit of using that smart object is if I apply four more adjustment layers on top, I can still go back in, double click, and I have all the adjustments that I just made before and I can re-edit them here. So that's something that's really nice and important. I would highly recommend doing that. Now, uh, the next thing that I probably wanna do here is I'm gonna make a luminosity mask. I wanna bring up some of the darks in the image. So I'm going to use this luminosity mask. If you are confused because you don't know how to use luminosity masks, be sure to check out the video that's earlier in the course on luminosity masks. But we're gonna assume from here on out that you've already watched that video or already understand luminosity masks. I'm gonna select a darks four, hit my curves layer here, let that open up. Maybe just bring that up a hair, bring back some of that darker detail. 
And then we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to do it on lights. I'm going to go maybe lights three. And I actually might want to brighten this spot. I'm not sure yet. No, maybe not. Might just want to darken it just a little bit. That's going to pull in a little bit more of that color. But I do actually want to create one more bright spot where the brightest parts of the image are. So I'm going to grab that uh, lights four. And we'll just pop that up a little bit, just like that. So you can see those three luminosity mask adjustments kind of help to soften the image a little bit, bring back some more of the detail that I'm missing. So I'm pretty happy with that. Now I want to create one more luminosity mask. It's going to be really subtle, but I want to try and pop the light that's hitting these rocks here. The best way to do it would be to select a lights, um, probably lights two. You can see it just barely selects these rocks. Not very much though. And we will click the curves again, and then we will bring this up just a little bit. Now you can see we popped that, but we also popped a lot of what's going on in the sky. Let's create that group and drop the curve into the group. Now we can put another layer mask on the top here. We will use the brush. We're gonna paint black, 100% opacity, 0% um, hardness. We'll increase the size quite a bit. I'm gonna keep increasing the size and I'm just gonna paint this out of the sky. I just want this adjustment really to be applied on these rocks here. So now you can see when I toggle that, just pops it a little bit. It's not a lot, but we could also duplicate this if you wanted to do it a few times. Um, just by using Command J, you can see I duplicated that. Now you can see that's starting to pop. Um, and additionally, if you're finding that you're losing some color there, like we are because we're brightening it, I can select this luminosity layer mask and I can add some saturation back in. So I'm gonna hold Command, click just like that, and then I'm gonna create a hue saturation that will create it with the same layer mask that's being used on these layers and it's inside the group so it's just being applied to what is over here now i can increase the saturation and i'm going to duplicate this layer a couple times just so you can see it a little bit better now you can see this was before the hue saturation this was after very very subtle um, but it does make a little bit of a difference and it's probably actually too strong now so let's go back maybe a out right there looks pretty good to me now that looks pretty good let's go ahead and do a little bit of dodging and burning here i want to dodge some of the light here to make this a little bit softer and to feel really nice and soft so what we're going to do is let's just create a new layer let's go to soft light blend mode again um, if you haven't seen the video on dodging and burning make sure to check that out earlier in this course but we will assume that you've already seen that here um, so I'm going to use my eyedropper, select one, this yellow color. We'll go about right in there. Hit OK. Bring up our brush. Let's go opacity low. Let's go 10%. I'd probably normally go a little bit lower. But for the sake of this video, we'll do 10%. Now we can just start to paint this in a little bit. Now you'll see we're kind of bleeding over into the foreground, which is not ideal. We don't really want to be bleeding over into the foreground. So to stop myself from doing that, I'm going to hide this layer real quick. I'm going to grab my quick selection tool, make that a little bit bigger. We'll go with plus, and we're just going to click and hold. Now the quick selection tool is going to be your go-to for something like this, where you've got this nice hard contrast um, between the foreground and the background. I'll create a layer mask here. Um, and now you can see it's just being applied in the sky. Now I don't mind a little bit of bleed over, but I just don't want a lot. So what I might do is drop the density here. Um, and that's just going to lower the opacity to make this gray instead of black. Um, if you have 0% density, nothing will show through. This is like 10%, you know, so you can adjust this. I know we haven't talked about this, um, but it's not something that I use a whole lot, but in this situation, it might work well. You can also try overlay and see how that looks. You can see it's a little bit too strong there, but that would be something that you could maybe think about in the future. Now, I want to talk about adding a little bit of an Orton effect on this, adding a little bit of a glow. So I want to show you guys how I do that. Um, and I have another video in this course talking about a few Photoshop effects, one of them being the Orton effect. So you should check that out if you want the more detailed explanation. But how I'm going to do this with the Orton effect 
I'm gonna merge all visible layers. So I'm gonna go Command, Option, Shift, and E. Make sure you're selected on the top layer. That should punch out a new layer here and you can double click and call this Orton or Glow. If that Glow makes more sense to you, go ahead and just call it Glow. Now what you wanna do here, go down to Filter. You're gonna go to Blur. I'm gonna go to Gaussian Blur. I like to blur by about 50 on my Orton effect. Now, what I will do here, I will hide that layer. Um, we want to create a lights mask. Usually I'll do a lights one. Uh, oops, this is lights one. Or maybe lights two, depending on the photo. Um, we can go lights two. We'll try lights two. And we will click on this button here, which will grab this mask as a selection. So now we have a selection made. Click on our layer mask. That will apply as a selection there. Now we want to change our blend mode again to soft light. And now you can see this is what the Orton effect has done. It's really softened that out. If you're finding that the effect is not strong enough, you can lower the density here to make it happen to more of the image. Just like that. And that is basically how you apply the Orton effect. There's a couple more complicated steps that you can take if you wanted. You know, you could add a brightness layer to just this, make it a little bit brighter, a little bit warmer, anything like that. But I'm going to leave it as is because I think it looks perfectly fine. You can see now I'm really starting to like that glow that's in there. Now, another thing that I mentioned in that video with a few Photoshop effects is mid-tone contrast. I'll show you guys how to do that here with a luminosity mask. I think it'll look good on this image. I like to grab my luminosity mask. Let's go with something about maybe lights or uh, mid-tones too, and then grab a curves layer here. And then you're just gonna create an S-curve. This just adds a little bit of contrast to the mid-tones. And just a little bit is really all that you need. Now, as I'm looking at this, I'm starting to notice our white balance is not good and the image is getting a little bit too dark. So I might just go back. Um, I have a few options here. I can either, yeah, I'll probably just go down make adjustments to one of these original curves just to make it a little bit brighter there. And we will go back and darken, uh, maybe we won't. Let's go about right there. So you can see it's nice being able to go back through and make adjustments to some of these original layers to make things still look good. Of course, you could just create a new layer on top, but if you already have something created that's making that effect, just go back through and make your adjustments there. Now I want to make some adjustments to the saturation of this image here. I think it's oversaturated. So I'm just going to go in, grab a little hue saturation and drop that maybe 10 ish points. That feels a little bit more realistic to me. Um, and if you wanted to go in and grab individual colors, like say you wanted to decrease just the blues or anything like that, you could do that here as well. For this image, it's not really necessary. So we will leave it at that. Now, the last two things I want to do to this image are to remove this person, which is probably going to work all right, but not amazing. Would have been better to get it with him not there. Um, and then we are going to apply my favorite little custom vignette, which I'll show you how to do. I think it's fantastic. Let's go about removing this person first. I'm going to create a new layer here. Uh, we've got some healing tools. I personally like just the spot healing brush. It's super easy to use. In this situation, it may not work. You can see all those megapixels I got. You can see what he's shooting down there. Great composition he's got. Um, and then you can click and drag. And we'll see how this works. I'm pretty doubtful that it's going to work well. But it might work decent enough. I mean, that's not horrible. But it could be better. You can go through and touch this up just like this if you wanted go through and grab this little section like that. You can re-click on a spot if you didn't like what it's done. Now, I would probably spend a little bit more time on this if I was doing this video just for myself. Um, but for all of you guys, I'm not going to spend a lot of time doing it. But you can see, you know, as I click and drag, it kind of improves just a little bit. So you can go back through and adjust that as you see fit. But you can see when I zoom out here, like you can't even tell. So that would be something where, you know, if I'm going to print this, I'd spend a little bit more time doing this. If I'm just posting to social media. Uh, it's not worth spending a lot of time doing. Um, but that is probably the best way. Just use the spot healing brush. Or if you're willing to use generative AI, it's probably going to work uh, quite well for that. I usually don't use generative AI in my stuff. But if you wanted to, just grab that little section. Generative AI will probably do a great job. Now, finally, 
Let's make my custom vignette here. Uh, I've got another video covering how to create the action on my custom vignette. So I'm not gonna show you the whole behind the scenes, I'm just gonna show you what happens after you press play. If you like what the vignette does, I'll link that video here so that you can watch the video on my warp vignette and then create that action for yourself. So what you wanna do is uh, draw a circle with your elliptical marquee tool. Make that nice and big. You can drag this around, you just wanna get it in the center. Somewhere about like that looks good. You're gonna clip, click on the warp vignette action. Again, you won't have this in your Photoshop unless you've watched my video and made the action yourself. But now it creates this vignette. Now we can go in and make adjustments to this. I like this vignette because I can warp it out. So I click on the, this is the darken layer, that's the lighten layer. So I lighten the inside, darken the edge. Click on this darkening layer and I'm going to make this bigger. I'm holding uh, the option key so it drags from all corners and I just wanna drag this out a little bit. Now, the thing about a normal vignette is um, it darkens equally around the image. Why would you wanna darken this as much as you would wanna darken this? Makes no sense, right? Um, you should have where the light is coming from should not be darkened at all. Where the light isn't coming from should be darkened a lot. So that's why I like this vignette because I click warp. You can zoom in if you want. Now I'll drag the vignette out and away from the light source because remember this layer, the edges of this layer are dark where the inside of the layer is not. So as I drag this layer out, it applies the vignette uh, less strongly the further out I drag it. I want to darken this bottom really nice and good. Somewhere about in there. I like to darken these clouds. That helps to bring back some of the luminosity in there. And, you know, somewhere right in there looks pretty good to me. We'll hit return and I will show you the before and after of my whole vignette here. I think this is really a great way to bring your image home. I hit command zero to zoom back in there, by the way. Now I'll toggle, this is before, this is after, before, after, before, after. So this really helps to bring my image home in my opinion. You can see I didn't darken this over here, but I darkened the left side a lot, the top a lot, um, as well as the bottom a lot, but I stayed away from the light there. So that's pretty much what I would do with this image. That's really all that I think needs to be done. I don't wanna overdo it here. Um, I'd probably sit on this image for maybe 24 hours and then come back and make adjustments if needed. Um, but otherwise, this covers exactly what I would do to this image. All right, guys, that's the quick and dirty of how I go through and edit my image. Hopefully uh, that didn't go too quickly for you, uh, but it is YouTube, so you can pause and play as you see fit and replay as much as needed. Um, but that really covers kind of what I do to my images in post-processing, really dialed it back a lot. I'm just using some of the more basic stuff now, but I've kind of figured out how to make that basic stuff work for me um, in order to really make my images uh, look good in my opinion, kind of fit my workflow if that makes sense. Again, if you haven't checked out the rest of the course, I think it's well worth your time if you were confused by anything today. Um, if you have checked out the course, hopefully um, you found the whole thing helpful. If you've watched the whole thing, I wanna thank you guys so much. Thank you very much for being here. Hope this course was helpful for you guys. Um, I'm really passionate about helping you guys figure out Photoshop if you are a landscape photographer. My name is Austin James Jackson. I wanna thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you guys next time. Adios.